Creo Parametric 11 introduced tables for model-based definition or MBD. In this video, we are going to take a look at selection, formatting, and editing your tables. Here I am in an assembly model. I have a bunch of different combination states. And right now I am on one of my combination states where I have three flat to screen tables. Let's take a look at selecting. If I move my mouse over a cell, the cell will highlight. Just like in detailing mode, if I tap the right mouse button once, it will highlight the row of the table. If I tap it again, it will highlight the column for the table. And then one more time, and then I'll be able to select the table with the left mouse button. And you'll notice when I click on it, I'm going to get a mini toolbar that opens up. I'll talk more about that in detail, but I do want to show one of the functions that you have from the mini toolbar. For example, if I select this cell from a table, in the bottom row of the mini toolbar, you have a bunch of selections where you can select a column, a row, or the entire table. Okay, let me deselect everything. If you take a look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you have a selection filter. And as always, the default selection is geometry, but from the geometry area, you also have the option for a table object. If you just want to limit yourself to being able to pick a cell or a table. So for example, I move my mouse over here. Hey, cells are highlighting, but geometry is not highlighting. Also, if you select a table, let me tap the right mouse button a few times and get this entire table, and then hold down the right mouse button, you also have a context-sensitive menu where you have choices like wrap text, save table, update table, delete, height and width, and customize. Well, that's for customizing your right mouse button menus. Let me deselect everything. And also for selection, if you take a look in your model tree, you now have a tables group. You have your different tables in here. Let's go to one of our other combination states. And here you can see that this one has a table. Let's take a look at some of the different formatting options. And so I am going to select the entire table. Let me move my mouse over and I'll just tap right until I select the entire table. And then with the table selected, the format tab is available. And if you take a look at this, a lot of the different controls are the same as what you have for a note, but there are some notable additional ones. I do wanna point out some of the functions that you have in here. So for example, you can change the color of the text. So for example, let's say that I decide for the text, I don't wanna use the default blue. Maybe I want something that matches the primary highlight color. And that way it is a lot bolder. Let me select the table again. And you also have the ability to specify a fill color. And rather than applying a fill color to the entire table, well, maybe you just wanna do that to a couple of cells. So for example, let me tap the right mouse button in order to get the row to highlight. And then with the row selected, here we have the same command for a fill color. And I can say, hey, let's use something like a yellow color for there. And then let me change the text back to a black color. And so you have complete control over the formatting of the different cells in your table or your entire table. Let me select that table once more. And you can see that we have some other controls over here like italicizing, bolding, and underline. In this case, bold is not available because of the font that I have selected. You have choices of justification and where it appears vertically within the cell. Then you have the boldness of the lines and the width or spacing of the text. And if you're also going to specify a slant angle, some of the other different controls, rotating the text, how you're controlling the line spacing between the text. Uh, but I do wanna show one other different option over here. So for example, I can select this cell in the table. There is a hyperlink command. I will be doing a separate video on hyperlinks within here. And the hyperlinks can either be to a URL 
or an internal link. And the internal link can be one of your different combination states. And so there's some great uses for that. Let me deselect. And let me actually select, yeah, let's select the table again. I just want to show that here we have a scale factor, and I'll talk more about the scale later on. Let me select this particular uh, row in here. For some reason, I, I have, to, oops, <laughs> let me see, select it again. Uh, here we have some height, width, and auto height commands. Let me go to one of my other different tables for that one. Actually, I want to go to my totals one. Okay. So for example, let me select this particular row over here. We have a height specified and I can control that value or maybe I want it to go to a height of two and hit the enter key. So that's one way that you can control the height of your different rows. And I'll go more into that later on. Let me select this particular column. Here you can see that we have a width control for that one. And I can say, hey, I want this one to be bigger by cranking up the numbers in there. I'll show you other ways of adjusting the width and the size of the table later on. There's also a scale control that you have in here as well. Let me deselect that. All right, so let's see. Um, also for selecting in here from both the mini toolbar, you have the ability to delete columns, rows, the table or the contents or insert above, insert below, insert to the left, or insert to the right. Those are also available from the formatting tab. You also have the ability to control how the borders display. And let me select this entire table once more. Oops, not that table. Let me just tap the right mouse button till I get this entire table to highlight. You can also control the color of the lines that you have for your table. So for example, let me choose something different like a green color. And there you can see that sort of like forced green for the borders of the table. So there you have it. Those are a bunch of different things that you have from the format tab. You'll also notice that when you select a table cell or an entire table, there is a table tab. And from the table tab in another video, I showed how you could add semantic references from here, you could save the table. There is also a command for rotating the table 90 degrees counterclockwise. There's also this update table. I think that will be something that will come into use later on. Okay, this video got a little long, so I decided to break it up. In the next video, we will cover editing, resizing, security markings, and erasing.